Today I thought I'd talk to you about cattle and there are around I think 34 different British breeds of cattle and I'm sure people watching who know better than I do will put me right if I've got that wrong but 34 British breeds and they vary into different sections. So a quick history lesson. So post-war, when we were a starving nation, post-World War II, the government asked us to put our foot on the accelerator for food production. And with cattle, we used to have lots of old-fashioned dual-purpose breeds that were quite good at producing milk and quite good at producing beef, things like the Gloucester and the Albion. But then what we did, we specialised in cattle production and we went for out-and-out -out dairy cows, so the black and white Frisian and the Holstein the Jersey and the Guernsey and many others, and then specialised beef breeds who were very good at producing beef, and the well-known British breeds would be the Hereford and the Angus, and of course the Highland. And it was those old-fashioned dual-purpose breeds that became rare, and the specialist beef breeds did a lot better, so the Angus and the Hereford now all over the country. Now the Highland, although they're quite a small beef animal, have never become rare because they're so good and well suited to the Scottish Highlands. They used to come from the sort of the Western Isles and although they're small in stature, they're incredibly hardy and they've got this amazing flowing coat and then this bit on their forehead that I think is called a docent. And this is a black bull. He's called Black Prince. So he's our stock bull with the cows. And the Highlands are all the same shape with horns. The bulls have got thicker, more solid horns. The cows wider and far reaching as they sweep up into the air. But they come in various colors. So obviously Prince is a black one. And then you've got the very classic red ones that you might see on all the postcards if you ever go to Scotland. But then that red varies in colours from very, very dark to very pale right through to yellows and even whites. And then you get chocolatey ones called Dun and Brindle, which is a mixture between chocolate and red. The Prince is a lovely fella. He's a fantastic animal and they are brilliantly suited at living up in Scotland. The, the crofters would have had them and they would have produced a very good calf and they would have possibly milked them as well. And they've been around, well, for centuries. I think the Highland Cattle Society was started in 1884 or something. So they are really, really lovely. We buy in bulls, we breed our own replacement females, so we keep all the female calves that are born on the farm, sometimes sell a few surplus ones. But then what that means is, though Prince here, we've had him a couple of years, but his daughters will be coming into the herd. And when they're sexually mature and old enough to get in calf, we obviously can't use their dad. So then we sell off the bulls and we buy in a fresh bloodline, a bull from somewhere else. So he'll be with us for a couple of years now and then he'll go on to another herd. He's done us well, he's got some lovely calves. I'll go and show you. On the farm park here, the public can see the cattle all the time and actually watch them giving birth when that happens. Valerie here, we filmed being born. So Fran does Fridays with Fran and she was here to give a running commentary as little Valerie was born. When she was born, she was jet black, but you can see now the sun has sort of started to bleach her coat and she's going more gingery. And this is one of the cows, beautiful Highland cow, with these horns that look a little bit scary, but actually they're very quiet because they're so used to the public. Over there, we've got a platform where people can go up and then slide cattle pellets down the gutter that go into the trough so the cows can eat it. And Valerie's mum is over there having a bit of food. Thoroughly enjoying it. The Highlands produce very rich, nutritious milk. And you can see little Regal here, the calf, is drinking away on that lovely Highland milk. And of course, cows have got four teats and they're in quarters. So each quarter is separate and the calf will work his way around all four teats, making sure it's got the most of it all. And you can see this little calf is growing well and uh, Looking wonderful, very similar colour to his mum. 
Well, those are the lovely hardy highlands. Let's go and see some more cattle that are back at the main farm. So this is our cattle shed where we keep the majority of our cattle during the winter months. And like most cattle farmers across the country, we bring our cattle in because if we left them out during the winter, because they're big animals with heavy feet, they'd make a real mess of the pastures, which would spoil the grass for the rest of the year. And they just churn it up and turn it into a mud bath, particularly around the areas that you might feed them silage or hay. So these cattle are in the shed. So it's got a roof on it to keep them dry but they don't mind the cold and so they're very happy in here in this nice airy shed in fact you want lots of air movement so they don't get pneumonia or any other diseases so it's a perfect shed for them and then we feed them silage and silage is grass that we've cut during the summer months we then pickle it so it doesn't go off and then we feed it to them down the front and they get a little bit of barley and some minerals in there as well and some molasses and it's called a tmr total measured ration so every mouthful gives them everything they need and here is one of our old favourites that lots of you have been asking about. This is the lovely strawberry and she's enjoying some food. And she has got quite a big belly, partly because there's lots of grub in there, but also because she's heavily pregnant and she's due to give birth late spring, early summer. But I've got a bit of a surprise for you over here. In this pen, we've got Winnie. Now, Winnie is Strawberry's daughter. And just behind Winnie, there we go, is Winnie too. This is her newborn calf. You wanna come and say hello to everybody? Up you get, there's a lovely baby. And so we've got three generations in the shed here. So this is Strawberry's granddaughter. And it's a lovely little calf. It's by one of our Albion cattle. And uh, it's come out this lovely blue color. Come on, let's have a little look at you so everyone can see. It's always quite wise to carry a stick with you when you're in with cows that have given birth because they can get quite protective and I'll just use it to keep her away from me if I need to but actually she's so lovely and quiet and the calf is doing really well drinking away on, on her milk and it's looking fit and strong. So next door we've got our Albion bulls and uh, none of those are the dad. The dad is a bull called Ari that we've sold down to a farm in Devon. But these are our Albion bulls that we'll be selling on to other farmers across the country. The Albion being a very rare breed. In this pen, we've got a group of cattle that are all around about two years old and they're mixed breeds. And so we've got our lovely Highlands here. So these young heifers will go to Prince in the summer and then they'll give birth nine months later. That's the gestation period of a cow. We've got a white park here who's a steer. So he's a castrated male for beef. Uh, we've got an Albion heifer over here. This is a lovely blue Albion and then a white Albion over there. So the Albions come blue, white, and sometimes black. And then over here, we've got four Gloucesters. And the Gloucesters are very distinct in their markings. They've got this lovely mahogany color, and then this white mark along their back and down their tail. And their horns are supposed to be fine and wide with a tendency to turn out. And Dot here, has got a beautiful head with lovely horns. In fact, she's, she's a bit of a show heifer, really. She'd do well in the show ring. They have a great classes at the Free County Show every year for Gloucesters. And uh, I reckon she'd do quite well. Nice little black teats as well. And the Gloucester nearly became extinct. My dad and a bunch of mates went down to Wick Court where the Dowdswell sisters were selling their, their herd. And that was the last herd of Gloucesters in the country. And it was thought they might go for slaughter. But thankfully, my dad and his mates bought cattle and brought them back to their farms and started to breed from them. And now the breed has come back into popularity. So they've been around on this farm ever since I was a little boy. And I think they're really special.
in here we've got one of our really lovely white park cows and the white park has a white body and black points so black nose eyes ears end of their horns and on their feet and they're a very ancient breed it's believed they've been around since Celtish times or some people think that the Romans brought them into the country and they're absolutely magnificent to look at which is why they ended up in parks, so stately homes with big parklands would have these cattle in them, really as a sort of status and something beautiful to look at. And at one time, when the knights and kings of England would have hunted the bulls on horseback with hounds galloping through the forest trying to spear them, which is just extraordinary to imagine. Probably quite scary as well. And we've had them on the farm for as long as I remember. They're really, really lovely cattle, great mothers, quite tough, very good at converting rough pasture into good quality beef. And uh, yeah, they're just fantastic animals, aren't you? Do you like that, Nyla? That is a good girl. The horns do look uh, quite dangerous, but as long as you're careful, should be fine. So out of all the British breeds of cattle, we've got five. So we've got the Shorthorn, the Highland, the Gloucester, the White Park and the Albion. And now that the spring has sprung and the grass is starting to grow, we'll be turning these cattle out soon. Well, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into some of our cattle breeds and we'll keep you updated as they give birth, particularly Strawberry over there, who will probably give birth in about July time.